Hi, I'm Tom Stevenson and welcome to Microsoft Project The Course. This is video number 11 in the series, so if you haven't watched or been learning Microsoft Project on the previous videos, in the description below I have a list of them. We start right from the beginners. Uh, there's access to files so that you can follow along and it'll get you there in learning Microsoft Project. So today's session is a little bit different. In the past sessions, I've been showing you how to use Microsoft Project very detailed, uh, clicking on which tabs, which icons, and we've gone from basic setup to the setup of a baseline schedule with inclusive of resources and costs. We've gone through the updating process, the recovery process, adding change orders to it. So I thought this was a good time to pause a little bit and go through exactly what's going on and thinking of it from a grassroots level and attaching a methodology of thinking, a framework so that you can actually follow it when you're looking at, well, how do I, once I've updated the schedule, revise it? How do I recover the time? So let's just jump in a few slides I'm gonna go through and I'm gonna discuss the direct method. And then if you haven't done the updating process and you're pretty good on Microsoft Project, you could probably go back three or four videos and get a good handle on that and then really learn it deeply while understanding what's going on. If you've been following along, as a lot of you have, uh, by all the comments and that, uh, then it should help to crystallize things uh, before we move a little bit more forward in looking more deeply at some of the analysis and material that comes out of our Microsoft project. We're doing this for a reason so that we can um, really become good at understanding where we are and then what we need to do about it to get ourselves back on track because no project runs exactly to schedule. So being able to iterate and understand what's going on is very important. Okay. So we kind of, and this is just quickly, just sort of giving you a summary and giving you an example that you can think about. Uh, but for sure, you know, we have our schedule and I've kind of manipulated my columns so you can see stuff, but we've discussed that too. You know, how you can uh, customize your columns on your screens. Uh, so in this case, I've got uh, something uh, has our baseline here, right? So we've got a baseline start and baseline finish, and these are all on the same dates. And then we put in a status date, the date we update the schedule to, and then we update it, right? So then we got actual starts, actual finishes, and we're in the regular Gantt chart view. It looks like it's done up to that point, but you do notice that it was supposed to finish on Tuesday and it's actually finishing on Friday. So that's telling me something's not going very well here. So I really don't know what our variance is yet, um, but we'll find out. So on the next screen is what we call the tracking Gantt. And we've shown you that in the last few videos. And that's, you know, go to slide to the left, right click and look for tracking Gantt. And that'll bring up that tracking Gantt view. Uh, we can see the baseline is the bottom bar. What has changed is the upper bar. And we've started one day later than we thought. And we're finishing three days later overall. So we should be looking at that and thinking several things. We should be thinking, why did we start one day late and why did it take two days longer? There's questions you want to be able to answer. And that's where actually when you answer those questions, it's really helpful if you put your answer in the notes. So later on, you can fill out a narrative that sort of gives the highlights from project of what's happened in the recent update. And we'll talk about that in future videos as well. All right. So we've got this one day and so one day late. And it took two days longer is basically what's going on there, right? So two days longer duration than we originally thought. So that's why we're three days late overall. So this would have been accomplished, you know, we've got that, now it's updated, right? And so we put in the actual uh, start and the actual finish date. So it's it, we're done. We know why by that point, hopefully. And uh, we can be thinking forward because this might be, if you're doing a multi-story building, so it's a 30-story building, well, is this going to be something that's going to continue? So that's going to be three times 30 stories. That's 90 days late if you follow that trend. Or is this this one here just a one-off? So it's only this time. But then we still got to contend with the two days. So if we've got 30 stories, that's going to put us 60, 61 days in total if we continue on that trend. 
So what Microsoft Project is trying to do, it's trying to give you information early. You're on the first floor so you can take action to remedy it. So you're not kind of just complacent about it and letting things happen to you. You're seeing that, you're analyzing it, and then you're gonna do something about it. So that should be the thought process there. <clears throat> now let's say another month goes by and you're doing a formal update. I recommend updating more frequently than that, but a formal update in construction projects typically goes to the client. So we need to have something to put together uh, to the client from that perspective. So let's say it's a month for a formal update and what's happened in this time period. Now, maybe we didn't fix this. Now, I've recommended in previous videos that you would have fixed this three-day delay, but let's say that we didn't. All right, we're gonna gather information from the site. You know, if you if you can gather it in on an iPad, much better, but you know, some way, shape or form that we need to gather the information for what's been happening. And you should have been writing it down as the project's continuing day by day, what's getting completed, what's partially completed, etc. And then we enter it into the actual. So this is gonna be on the tracking screen. Um, in that case, you would enter actual starts and actual finishes or into the actual start and actual finish columns. Uh, so you enter that information and some things might be started but not completed. So you can see that as well. So you update it and this one started but not completed. And what's going on? Okay, so <clears throat> again, I don't really know until I look at the variances and then I can follow them and I can see <clears throat> that they, they go from uh, different uh, periods, from three days, three days to five days, four days, four days to six, six to eight, right? So I know overall I'm eight days late. And I would try to figure out, well, what made this take two days longer? What, what did we do good here that brought it back, you know? Especially if these items are on the critical path, that's important, right? In this case, they are on the critical path. So you can see how it, went from three and then it started to grow out longer to five. Oh, we got a day back here, four, that's good. But then we lost two more days and then we lost two days again. So what are all the reasons for that? Putting notes is good because you won't remember this stuff later on. And construction, unfortunately, we tend to be pretty litigious. So it's good to have things documented. Maybe the delays, you're not causing the delays. Maybe it's a consultant issue. So you wanna know what's at the root cause of it. So you're putting notes, double clicking on the activity, bring up the task information box, and then in the notes section, put a note like we've discussed in some of the previous videos. And you're done with that updating process. You know you're eight days behind. So the, as I've said before, the, the updating process is totally rear mirror looking. You're looking out the back window, it's happened. You can't change it. But now, this is where you're actively looking at, can I actually change this? What can I do to um, improve this situation? We call that revisions or recoveries. And you know, some people get wound up about whether you call it a revision or recovery, but I, I tend to call it a recovery because you're trying to recover the time. So we look along the critical path. So I've got a distinct method that I, I call the direct method. It'll come up on the slide at the end uh, that I've kind of developed over the years. And really, you're going to look, look along the critical path. So you're going to look along the critical path. And you're going to look try to look sooner on the schedule. Like if this is a big building, I don't want to be looking six months down the road to try to find out where I can find save the time. I want to try to save the time as soon as possible because something else is going to come up. Something's always coming up. And so the sooner you can look to recover that time, the better. But at the same time, I don't want to spend a lot of money. So I've got to be kind of looking at sooner and something that's not going to cost a lot of money. Sometimes eventually you have to spend the money. But if you can, you know, by uh, increasing the loading of some of the resources, if you can overlap some things that you didn't originally plan to overlap, those are good ways to uh, save time. On the other hand, if you need to and you don't have as many choices, you might decide, well, I want to uh, work this weekend. Usually that involves paying your trades overtime. And so that's premium pay. And usually even with premium pay and overtime, people tend to not be as productive because they're tired. So it's not the most uh, cost effective way to get the time back, but it is 
uh, going to help in that direction. There's limitations with everything. So again, that's understanding your project. All right, so we're looking at that and we found a few ways, you know, maybe we've maybe we've increased the resource so that we uh, shorten this by a day. Uh, maybe uh, here we put in a negative lag over here in the plan. Um, so we got it down to five days. And then here, maybe we have decided that we're gonna work a weekend, right? So we've got a negative lag here. We decided we're gonna work this weekend. So you see how the calendar days are changed so that these are exception days that you're gonna work those two days. And we've talked about that in one of the earlier videos. I think it was the second or third video where we talk about calendars. And you can always go back and see exactly how that can be um, done. Um, not your first choice probably, but definitely. So that's, that's really looking at it, how do we pull it down. How do we look at the uh, costs? It's fairly soon after the delay. So that's that's effective that way. And it is getting us back to zero eventually. With that, with negative lags taking place, we're getting back to zero. So we're overlapping things in this way. And for purists there, you might want to, instead of had a finish to start, you might have wanted to have a start to start with a positive lag there, especially if you're in the heavy civil or heavy industrial areas, they usually in the contracts require start to start relationships in these situation with a plus lag instead of a finish to start with a negative lag, just pointing that out there. Uh, but in the rest of the sectors, they don't really care. Um, so we're back to zero and so we're back on track. So really what were we doing with this? Well, I call it, I call it an, an anatomy of a recovery, the direct method. All right, and it's a six point process that you're using in your scheduling software like Microsoft Project. You're looking at opportunities along the critical path. That's why in the first few sessions, the first few videos, we talked about the importance of having a clearly identified critical path, right? You're looking sooner rather than later because something else is gonna come up. Something else will come up. So you don't wanna take the time, the flexibility you have towards the end of the project, because when you get to the end of the project, then you'll have no options. And then the only option is just to run late. Uh, the reduce or eliminate cost. You're looking for the no or low cost solution. So that's the R in direct, D-I-R, right? It combines with the number two, immediate savings. Right, so do I wait a little bit because I can get it for next to nothing or do I try to do it now and it's gonna have a cost implication? But don't go too far out because again, as I said, there's gonna be other things that come out. Now with Microsoft Project, the big advantage that people really don't see is that you can play with it. You can try different scenarios. You can say, what if we did this? What if we did that? We call it a sensitivity analysis. If we do this, what happens? If we do that, what happens? You can collaborate and engage with the trades on what will work. And if you think about E with the experimenting, that should really tie to with the C with commitment and communication. If you can actually work with the trades on this and get them to commit to it, or they have an idea themselves and then you experiment in project to see how this works and it works well, well, if somebody suggested it, they're much more committed to it. So if you involve them in it, that's gonna help your project and your team. And then you can try it in Microsoft Project and see what the results are. Now for the team, all right, so for the team, this is gonna be helpful for the whole team because you're gonna build confidence after you have these things come up, you work out solutions and you start implementing those solutions and then other things are coming up, but you're, you have a system, you have a process, you have a framework to follow. So anatomy of a recovery, the direct method, something I developed, I think you will find is very helpful for you. Um, so I hope that that helps in that way. If you want more information on project management, uh, I have written a book on project management, planning, schedule, and control, where I dive into these topics uh, through American technical publishers. Uh, so you can take a look at that. I'll try to leave uh, a link in the description below. And don't forget, uh, there will be a link to files that you can practice on, go back to the previous videos. So check it out. I'm Tom Stevenson, wishing you a wonderful day. and. Don't forget to click subscribe and notifications as we build this construction community. Bye for now.